How's it going everyone? Welcome to another episode of Animation Power Tips, sponsored by Autodesk. In this episode, I want to give you guys a little bit of uh, tips of how to actually use Maya 2020 new features uh, as a gameplay animator. So I'm just going to talk about one or two, maybe three features that you can have on Maya 2020 that will help you as a gameplay animator. Nothing too big, just a little teaser. I'm gonna try and do more of these videos showcasing some of the new features because I feel Maya 2019 and Maya 2020 are some of the biggest drops by Autodesk for years now, especially if you are an animator. If you haven't seen all the earlier episodes until now, please make sure to check them out. The more you watch, the more you learn. Also make sure to subscribe if you haven't, smash the like button as always, and check out my animation workshop. Uh, you can check it on my website, harveynewman.com, for more information. So I have you said all that, let's get started with this episode. So um, my 2020 and my 2019, I believe are two of the biggest uh, releases by Autodesk in a long, long while. And in terms of animation, uh, you are definitely in for a treat because there's so many new things that you can actually take from this in order to actually uh, streamline your workflow and make you work a little bit faster with a Maya that is like really good straight out of the box and really, really fast. So let's dive into it and I'll show you some of the stuff that I'm talking about. Now, uh, first thing that I need to show you guys is definitely caching. I spent years and years and years and years just actually play blasting my stuff as much as I could. So play blasting is a bad habit, I feel, as an animator, because what happens is that every single change that you do, you get excited, because especially if the shot is going well, you have a tendency to be like, okay, how does this look in real time, right? At 30 frames per second or 24 frames per second or even 60 frames per second to the point that you keep on play blasting all the time. I always wanted Maya to have caching exactly for this. So you can see your animations in real time. They look exactly as it would on your play blast, but on your viewport. For you to find caching uh, on Maya 2020, you can find it here on this uh, top icon. If you leave your cursor on top of the icon, it will tell you cache playback toggle, right click for more options. So as, so as soon as you click it, it will turn blue and the blue, it will mean that actually your animations will start playing and you will start caching your animations accordingly. Now, um, this is the only thing you have to do in order to actually get your playback to be cached and for you to actually play your shots in real time. There's a few things for you to actually kind of pay attention and that you can change in order to make your life easier. Now, if you right click here on top of this button, uh, you have uh, cache playback preferences. If you click on them, um, you have a few things that will sh surely make your computer or your play playback a little faster. So by default, you will have a percentage of RAM that you want to use for your playback. 50% of your entire RAM will be used by default, you can increase it or decrease it, or you can actually stop caching and memory limit. Uh, leaving this as default should work fine. Now, um, you, can, you will have evaluation cache by default uh, whenever you actually have it, leave that by default, but you can change um, how your scene gets cached on the fly. And that is actually very useful. So you can actually kind of uh, right click and change the way your caching is actually being uh, set. So by default is evaluation cache, um, but you can change that at any point to actually be a software cache or hardware cache. Um, see what works best for you. Um, different things work best for different people. So depending on your settings, depending on your computer, your scene, a different caching solutions will apply to you. Another good thing to have is uh, if you go to your caching preferences, you can actually have a few different options for your uh, timeline. So as you can see, this blue line shows up on the bottom as soon as you cache a scene. You can change the height of, of this bar to be a little bigger so you can see it better. Um, I like that, works best for me. And I also like to kind of put it above the timeline. You can save that, that will actually be your new default settings. And now you have a thicker bar for your caching and you actually can tell whenever things are not cached by clicking the button and that bar will disappear. So now things are back to being slow or whenever you actually click your caching, it will 
give you that little uh, bar as soon as it starts loading so you can see that super quick and now what you've seen is cached and you'll be able to actually kind of up preview animations much faster on your viewport as if you were doing play blasts all the time beautiful way of working great great stuff a little side note just as an addition to the tips the height of your time slider as i showed you on the first video when you change your ui to be your own used to be on preferences so if you actually go to preferences it used to be under time slider and there was an option here that basically gave you height how high do you actually want your time slider to be that option no longer exists in this menu and the reason why is because you can change your time slider uh, height by just basically hovering your cursor on this little line here and changing the height to be bigger or smaller depending on what you what you want a quick note for you guys um, because uh, it kind of threw me off when i actually moved to my 2020 but it's actually there just a little bit better and more streamlined so now the second thing we're going to talk about is animation bookmarks very very useful for a gameplay animator because you as a gameplay animator are constantly dealing with most more than likely more than one animation so an into run and then a loop and then an out of run and bookmarks makes that much easier so for you to go to bookmarks you just click this little icon here that will actually give you like a, a little menu that you can actually add your first bookmark so you actually kind of go first bookmark and then you add a color to that bookmark so i'm going to add green and then um, when do you want that bookmark to start and end in this case i'm just going to say maybe frame 40 and then create so from frame one to frame 40 i have my first bookmark and it's green right um, now you can actually click the bookmark and say frame bookmark and what that will do was actually kind of a change your timeline to um, only the bookmark and i love that that is beautiful um, because um, you're constantly changing for example this is the intro intro animation right so after that point like this is the the bit where my animation my weapon goes in so therefore you actually go into the animation right there so that is bookmarked that is the first bit of the animation if you double click on your uh, uh, time slider here on top you can actually see the whole animation so double clicking uh, shows you everything and then double clicking again gets you back to before just in case you guys didn't know as you can see the caching play updated to uh, fill all my animation which is great so now i actually want to go in and showcase the rest of the stuff that i have to bookmark so for example i know that from frame 40 until frame um i think it was about 70 i have another bookmark that i can add as a loop so i go back to this click the bookmark and then I say from frame from frame 40 to about frame 70, I want another bookmark, give me brown, and then say um, this is looping. So now green is intro and brown is looping. You can start to see the benefits of actually having bookmarks, right? So now I have a shooting from frame 70 until until frame 125 so same thing go to my bookmark manager give it the color purple and then go shooting and that is from frame 70 to about say frame 125 when you highlight your timeline you actually get the numbers automatically which is actually very useful so create and now i have another bookmark there for shooting and because i can actually kind of go in here and then frame bookmark it means that i can actually kind of uh, get just to work on this on this bit and then go to another bookmark if i need to which is great now um, another good thing for maya 2020 is the graph editor themes uh, very very cool stuff that I actually didn't thought I needed until I saw it and I'm like yes this is exactly what I needed I didn't know I needed it this much but it's great um, so this is your default graph editor that you use that you probably used to at this point but the beauty of it now is that you can actually go to view and you can go to theme 
and then you can change your theme to actually be something else. So right now we are in dark, but I can actually add it, like make it light or make it uh, any other color. So even classic, my classic, the old school one, this is how it used to look. This is how it can be for you if this is what you want. So uh, I think it's a pretty cool feature. Uh, now we actually have uh, also uh, on top of that we have color preferences and this is really useful because it allows you to get your graph editor to look the way you want. So I'm going to go back to dark because I like that and it will change that. But then I actually want to change a few things. So for example my background I want to make it darker and then you can also change the play range shade color. And, and this is great because I like to make mine another, another shade. So I like to make mine a little bit more bluish like this. Um, so it looks like that. So I know that between this and this is what I have selected and anything that is colored is uh, actually outside of the bounds of what I have. This is basically to give you, if you actually go back to your timeline, let me just save these colors. If you actually go back to the timeline and sh showcase everything, this showcases the whole animation, right? So you have everything selected here. This is the beginning, this is the end. If you actually change your, your range to be within like, for example, a frame bookmark, so this one, you see the change, uh, the frame range changing there. So really cool stuff, uh, really helps you. A few quick tips for the graph editor as well. Um, you can change how big or how small the keys are in your menu, but most importantly, if you go to uh, view and select highlight affected curves, you'll get this highlight that you didn't get before. And that happens if you actually kind of a, a grab a handle and, uh, and change it or grab the whole key and you'll say, say that this and this is gonna be affected by this one key, which is really, really useful. That is basically all I had for you guys. I hope this stuff, these new features actually help you. Uh, once again, I'm gonna go in more detail in a future video with more features because my 2020 is full of them. But for now, I think that they should more than suffice for all gameplay animators out there that want to take advantage of these new Maya features. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until the next video, stay well, stay safe. Peace.